in order to know what we can do when we are dissatisfied with our lives, with where we are in our life, if we're unhappy with everything, the city we're in, the job we have, where we're living, our relationships, whatever it is, the key to overcoming that dissatisfaction and to discover the gratitude, contentment, and peace with where we are right now so that we have the energy to get to the place we want to be. We need to look, instead of what's going on inside of us, let's look at what we can see around us. And instead of going within like we normally do, let's just observe from an outside perspective ourselves and other people's situations. And what we will find is that there can be two people who have the same job, the same income, the same relationship status, and one will be happy and content, and the other will be complaining and negative. Whether it is at a great job or a terrible job, whether it is a high earner or a low earner, we can always see someone who just seems to let nothing bother them. And we can see someone who everything bothers them. And so the first thing we have to realize is that no matter how much the story in our head tells us that life is unfair, that life sucks, that we can find a way to be at peace and find joy in this moment. It is available to every single person. And just because someone seems to naturally be able to embrace and love their situation in life doesn't mean that this is just a gift and a blessing to a few lucky individuals. Now, it may come naturally to certain people, but this state of being is available to all of us for a variety of reasons. Just like some people prefer the outdoors and some people prefer indoors. Some people will have a natural tendency towards positivity. Sometimes that's because of genetic factors. Sometimes it's because of our upbringing and experiences. But just as we can change our preferences and they change throughout our lives, most adults don't still watch their favorite children's shows. <laughs> and so we can all discover a way to naturally be at peace and to look for the positive in everything in life. Not only will there be someone who likes their situation and someone who doesn't like the exact same situation, but someone out there in every situation has either gone from loving it to hating it or hating it to loving it. And this change is something we can all do when we raise our level of consciousness because consciously we can change anything. Consciously we can become anyone. And it is only when we slip back into unconscious behaviors, patterns, and thoughts that we revert to whatever has the most inertia. Meaning, when we have spent years feeling down, 
and seeing only the good things other people have and seeing only the bad things that we have. That is going to create a very strong mental habit. But we can break every habit. And the way we break this mental habit of negativity, dissatisfaction, and ingratitude is actually very simple. And this one flipping of the switch, this one little change, will improve every single aspect of our lives, our relationships, our work, our creativity, and how much we just enjoy life, which is the most important thing we can have because that is really the only thing that matters when we really look back on our life. It doesn't matter if we were stressed, worried, angry, jealous, and greed filled and have every luxury item in the world because we will feel like we did not have a good life. If we don't have the warmth of love from others or at least ourselves, we will feel like this life was unbearable. And so when we look at who has that figured out and when we see someone who is just flowing with life, it doesn't matter if they're flipping burgers or a surgeon operating on hearts. The people who are enjoying the hard work, who are enjoying the painful process of growing and learning so that we can be the best in our field, those people have something that dissatisfied people don't have, and that is presence. Presence is when we are not losing ourselves in a downward spiral of thoughts because we see those thoughts for what they are. And so we don't give them our energy unconsciously. And we consciously stay in the here and now without losing ourselves to worry insecurity, and stress. All of that negative thinking we would never do consciously. We would never be drained of energy in a negative thought spiral of doubt and fear for the future. When we stay present, when we watch our thoughts, and when we watch our thoughts and we become that witness the inner peace from the stillness is rejuvenating and energizing instead of draining. This is how we see those people who have seemingly endless energy to dedicate to their passions. They see their mind and its tendency to be self-critical, to put that pressure on ourselves, and they redirect their energy to that positive place because they have watched their minds. They watch their words when they're speaking. And so they don't say things they regret. They don't act unwisely because they're impulsive or insecure. And that is why these people seem often like everything goes their way, even if it doesn't. They act like it does. And we can all adopt that mindset. And it's not delusion, because when we act as though everything goes our way all the time, guess what? <laughs> it's more likely to go our way. And when it doesn't, we have the confidence to know that we can fix it, that we can turn things around. 
And it's as simple as making presence into a habit where we, as we speak, are witnessing ourselves speaking. When we think, we witness ourselves thinking. And whatever we're doing, we witness ourselves doing it. This is how we think wisely, we act wisely, and we speak wisely. This is how our relationships improve. This is how our bad habits decrease. And how we are able to rededicate ourselves. Because work is play. And that's really the difference between a dissatisfied person and a satisfied person. Because constant work is a part of life. No matter who we are, there is constant change. And that change means that all of our hard work we put into something won't last forever. And we're going to need to put more work into maintenance and keeping things on track. So even that word work, we can call play. And when we do that, we are able to achieve so much more because we no longer give away our energy when the work becomes energizing. When we don't see it as a pain or disturbing us from our entertainment. And so all stress disappears. It's one thing to go throughout our lives like most people do where we accumulate stress throughout the day and then at night or on the weekend we can blow off some steam and let it out. But this is not the optimal way to go through life. We can't always control the stressors in our life. We can't always get away to meditate or, as so many do, drink alcohol or eat bad foods or gossip with our friends like we usually do to release stress. When we become present and we make it a practice and a habit and it becomes second nature, we stop taking on stress at all. We can be in stressful situations. We can see our mind start to complain. And we never let it get out of hand. We never go down that rabbit hole that's going to make us miserable. And so we no longer need to let off steam. We no longer live on edge and ready to explode at anybody nearby that upsets us or inconveniences us or says the wrong thing out of their own lack of presence. And we can be while doing. We can love hard work because we know that it is going to help us reach our dreams, reach our goals, provide for our family, put food on our table. We can hold space for all of that negativity in the world. We can be aware of conflicts in the world. We can be aware of the poverty and the hunger out there. And we can actually respond to it with compassion and wisdom instead of getting into negativity and anger or fear or disillusionment, disappointment, or feeling defeated. So this is really the only way we can truly be there for ourselves, our family, our friends, our community, our country, and this beautiful green rock we live on, spinning through infinity. And when we never lose sight of that infinite universe we live in. And we just maintain a presence and an awareness of all 
that is, ever has been, and ever will be. Then these little details, these day-to-day annoyances, cannot hold a candle to the gratitude and contentment we feel. But we have to shine our light of consciousness through those dark and gloomy clouds of thought so that we can see our blessings, see the infinite miracles around us. And it just takes shining brighter than the darkness. And that is really the light of presence. That is when there is no veil between us and the world around us. We live in a magical universe. It is mystifying and beyond our understanding. And it isn't our situation that makes us forget that. It is our thoughts about our situation. We may not be where we want to get to, but we can accept where we are. We can accept our path on this journey. And in fact, I would say it's essential to marching down that path, to taking those first steps of our journey that we're called to take, to shining a light on that path that is meant for each of us. And when that presence shines through us, The whole world can see it, and we become a beacon for others. Because presence is magnetic and attractive, and people want to be around it. Because presence isn't just how you see the world, but it literally creates an energy field around you. We all can sense where someone's attention is. We can tell if they're lost in their heads. We can tell if they're listening to us. And just like that, we can tell when someone is fully present. They're not doubting themselves. They're not questioning each word and motive of everyone else or themselves. There is just complete relaxation that others feel in that presence. And this is why we say that great actors have an amazing presence because they literally just know how to relax their body, how to get out of their head and to be completely connected with the other actors in the scene. So they aren't reading a script in their mind. They are reacting truthfully to the other actors. And they cannot do this if they're in their heads. They have to get out of their head. They have to be fully present in order to react truthfully. And that is how real connection happens. And this is why most theater schools just teach how to relax on camera or on stage. Because we all have that fear and nervousness come up when there's a camera pointed at us or people are looking at us. And so just training over and over again how to relax the muscles in our body, how to loosen up, how to become fully present and engage with others. This is most of acting. This is how we look natural on camera versus nervous, tense, stressed. Even they may be imperceptible to the audience on a physical level, but we can feel when someone is nervous. We can feel when they're not connecting. We can't really describe it in words, but we all know when we're seeing a good actor and someone who is in their head thinking of their next line to say instead of listening to the others. And just like actors... We need to practice. Just like an actor trains for years, we need to spend 
as much time practicing presence. And it doesn't mean we have to wait four years to be seeing results. It just means we need to start now making that new habit. And over time, we shift from maybe 1% present, maybe 2%, to eventually 100%. And when we reach total presence, this is when everything we do becomes intentional and conscious. Unconscious, unhelpful, unproductive, negative, incessant, repetitive thinking stops because we would never do that with our wisdom, with conscious choice. We only make ourselves suffer unconsciously. So the more we practice, the quicker that habit takes hold. And so we just start noticing when our mind races off, we notice. When heavy emotions sweep us away, we pay attention. When ever heavy emotions take us over, this is the opposite of presence. We have lost ourselves. We are not seeing what we are doing or thinking. We are totally absorbed in our head and we could walk into a wall <laughs> for all we know. And to avoid those mistakes, that clumsiness, all of those overreactions, whether they're internal or external, we just start to practice and make a habit of presence. We supercharge that presence when we meditate and we block out all the distractions and we start to just make witnessing our normal way of life. And then as we go about our doing the rest of the day, we keep that habit going. We pay attention to our thoughts, to what we're doing, and hopefully even paying attention when there's no thoughts and starting to rest in this new way of being. When we are talking with someone, telling a story, usually we're talking and not really aware of what we're saying or where we're going. Maybe the first few words we say we thought about and then we forget ourselves and we start to go in autopilot. We all do this because autopilot is that energy saving mechanism of our brain. But autopilot is going to disconnect us from ourselves and others. This is giving our consciousness some time off to go somewhere else. But when we bring it back, everything we say becomes thoughtful. We choose our words more carefully. We are kinder and gentler to others and in our reactions to others because we don't forget that how we are treating others can have a tremendous effect on them. And just this one tiny switch in how we live our lives from unconscious to conscious. Addictions disappear effortlessly. Our negative story about our life disappears effortlessly. We don't have to force positive thoughts. We don't have to tell ourselves things that we're not really feeling which tends to make us feel worse because when we are feeling really bad and we say life is great, life is great, what we are really doing is creating a larger disconnect between reality and 
what we want it to be. Instead of allowing whatever we're feeling, instead of being present, instead of being our own caretaker. So we don't have to tell a new story. We just have to watch that story. We just have to witness ourselves and never lose ourselves. And this is a skill that every single human can learn and develop. There is no one unable to become the witness, the watcher, the guide of our thoughts and of our lives. And when we realize that, we become very capable of changing what we find undesirable and creating the life that we've always dreamed of. We can be in stressful situations without stress. We can be in a less than ideal apartment and be grateful for a roof over our head. And gratitude really is the most important emotion that we can feel and that naturally arises from presence. And with the power of gratitude, no matter our situation, we can witness peacefully whatever we're in, whatever we're going through. We can peacefully put in enormous amounts of effort and thought into how we can change our situation. And it all starts with presence. Much love.